going to talk about um, today is really uh, moving uh, our health IT more to uh, performance-based, uh, outcome-driven uh, kind of uh, kind of systems. Uh, so we'll talk a little bit about uh, the state of uh, of healthcare IT from a uh, from a kind of a software perspective. Um, I belong to uh, work with IBM. Uh, IBM Rational Software, so we're heavily involved in uh, development and test uh, health applications, in this case, uh, and enterprise modernization. So we'll talk a little bit about the state of the business from a, an IT perspective, uh, talk a little bit about uh, initiatives around uh, smarter healthcare, uh, smarter computing, um, talk about some uh, solutions for modernizing uh, the uh, uh, healthcare IT systems, uh, which right now are very, very much siloed. Uh, somewhat mainframe based, multiple platforms, uh, multiple uh, applications. Um, talk about some modernization strategies and, and wrap up with a couple of client case studies uh, where we have uh, uh, worked with some hospitals, uh, worked with some insurance providers uh, to improve the quality of, uh, of their healthcare IT systems. Uh, so let's get uh, started in talking about uh, the state of the business. Um, so these are, are some of the uh, some of the numbers that, that we're seeing. Um, obviously, uh, on the, the positive side, uh, health uh, life expectancy has increased uh, over the last, uh, last century. However, uh, healthcare has been ranked as potentially the, the least efficient uh, industry in the world. And, and the reason for this is uh, the amount of uh, different stakeholders in, in part of the, in the process. Uh, we talk about uh, some of the issues that we see uh, with IT in healthcare. One of the key things, I think, is that uh, there's a, a large focus on very expensive technologies uh, that, not, that don't necessarily always provide the highest cost-benefit ratios. Uh, there are also uh, issues that we see uh, in the value-based uh, fee-for-service fee system. We're not really focusing necessarily on wellness and prevention, uh, the focus in the past has really been on, on acute care in a lot of cases rather than on prevention. So the end result of all this, uh, as Gary talked about in his keynote, is that the healthcare systems around the world uh, really are unsustainable. The cost of health uh, is going up and up, and pretty much whatever system any country is, is currently using uh, is really unsustainable. Runaway costs and commitment, uh, aging populations, outdated business models. So we really need to address all of these things. We need to provide more value, not just to uh, the consumer, the patient, uh, but also to the providers, uh, the hospitals, also the insurance companies as well. Uh, and we need to uh, leverage technology, leveraging our, our existing assets, uh, while at the same time uh, providing a, a more open uh, approach to our customers. As everybody uh, here, I'm sure, is using smartphones, uh, most people are using iPads. Uh, the consumerization of technology is really affecting all industries, and I think uh, in many cases, healthcare is really leading, leading the way in this, having patients provide pr with access to their own healthcare decisions, their own healthcare. Uh, so we need to uh, kind of address how we're going to move uh, really to this more uh, patient-based, uh, performance-based, outcome-driven uh, outcome -driven approach. So let's talk about this transition to what we're calling smarter healthcare. Uh, and there are really a, a number of things that we're trying to achieve here. Uh, reducing administrative costs, um, increasing operational efficiencies, uh, while at the same time uh, providing a faster response to uh, regulatory mandates. I'm going to talk in a little while about uh, ICD-10 coming up in uh, 2013 uh, and how that can be really an opportunity for modernizing a lot of uh, healthcare uh, and IT systems. Uh, in addition, you talk about things like earlier fraud detection, uh, reduced costs and complexity of ben benefit plans, uh, and really ultimately improving our margins. So there's a, a lot of things that, that are part of this uh, transition to smarter healthcare, uh, all the way from uh, administrative system modernization uh, on the left, all the way to business transformation and agility on the right, taking into account things like uh, market offerings innovation. Uh, in most cases now, insurance providers are not just marketing to employers. They're going to have to start marketing to individuals as well uh, with, the, uh, with the new uh, health mandates coming online. So we need to try make this transition uh, to a healthcare system where uh, everybody has access to the data they need, 
when they need it in a consumable way. And that's really the, the goal of uh, smarter healthcare here. So let's take a look at uh, a couple of the, uh, the, the initiatives. Uh, the first one really is around uh, collaboration, uh, right? sharing of data, um, coordinating access to data uh, across all the different uh, stakeholders in uh, an organization. Uh, this means not just the insurance companies, but the, the, the primary care providers, the specialists, uh, the patients uh, across uh, hospitals, uh, clinics, pharmacies, everybody having access uh, to the information they need uh, via electronic medical records. And this has been a really difficult challenge because all of these systems that these uh, different providers have been using are really all siloed. The hospital may have uh, a lot of their information on the mainframe that's only accessible through green screen terminals. Uh, the only way that doctors may have access to that information uh, is if they go into the hospital to find the information out. Uh, all the, a lot of the patient records are paper. So when somebody goes into the emergency room, there's no way to access all the information about a given patient uh, really easily and really directly. So collaboration is the key. Okay? Uh, information. <clears throat> Talk about all this information uh, that's in different systems. How do we get all that information together? And once we have all that information, how do we use it? So analytics is really the key. Uh, how do we take the information, millions and millions of lines of data, uh, and pull out the information that we need to make re reasonable diagnoses, to make uh, informed decisions about where we're going. Uh, personalization is the, the, the next key thing. Uh, providing patient access, individualized patient access to information. Uh, only you know, giving them the information they need to make informed decisions. Uh, and then the last couple of things are around uh, uh, talent and technology. Uh, how do we find the right skill sets in our IT departments to uh, help to modernize these, uh, these information systems. You know, how many programmers are still around who programmed the IMS or the KIC system on the mainframe 40 years ago? Uh, how many people in IT departments have the information about how all these systems work? And how do we bring them together and help to modernize these, uh, these systems? Uh, and technology. Okay. Uh, the answer may not be uh, to move wholesale uh, your systems to the cloud. And we have a, a panel later on where we're going to talk about cloud. But we need to leverage our existing assets. We need to modernize those assets that make sense and migrate uh, to new systems uh, over time. So how do we go about doing that? So these are all some of the initiatives that, that are driving uh, smarter healthcare. So smarter healthcare is really one step on the way to what we call at IBM smarter computing. Uh, and this really takes uh, into account three uh, different areas. So we, we need to take the uh, unstructured data uh, that's incomplete, uh, potentially untrusted, uh, and start to pull that into a trusted system where we can start to analyze the data, uh, make sense of it, and, and make better informed decisions. Uh, I think Gary was mentioning uh, you know, these, uh, the, the loose data, he was calling it, I think, uh, where we have data that's in spreadsheets. Uh, we have data that is on somebody's laptop. Uh, data that somebody's typed into notes on their iPad or, or recorded uh, as, as audio, potentially. But we're always guessing about the validity of that data. How accurate is that data? Uh, how much can we trust the data? So the first step is to build uh, an infrastructure uh, that's really designed for, for big data, okay? where uh, we understand where all the data is coming from. We have access to all that data. Uh, even if it's stored in multiple systems, we have the ability to, uh, to take it and analyze the data and reformat it in a way that makes sense to any given individual provider. Next section is around being uh, tuned to the task. Uh, IT sprawl is, is one of the issues that, that we face every day. And we have a case study at the back there we'll talk about in a minute uh, of Florida Hospital. Uh, they have uh, a system that's based on the mainframe on System Z, uh, but they have billions of lines of data and they're handling five million transactions a day uh, in that system. So there's a, a tremendous amount uh, of data that we're, we're talking about. Uh, and we have to have systems uh, that are optimized to the task of extracting that information, making sense of that information, and relaying it to the right providers. Uh, in the case of uh, software development, uh, when we're taking this information and building applications that take advantage of it, we have to have software that's tuned to a particular role. Uh, whether it's uh, 
for developers, uh, for testers, uh, for folks who are deploying applications. We need to make sure uh, that they have access uh, to these collaborative systems. And finally, uh, smart computing is, is managed in the cloud. Uh, cloud provides us with uh, tremendous uh, capabilities in terms of uh, availability of systems, in terms of being able to provision systems as we need them, when we need them. So we need to be able to manage that information uh, in the cloud uh, where that makes sense. Uh, and there's a panel later on where we'll talk a little more about cloud. Okay, uh, so within IBM, uh, we have uh, a whole uh, range of competences in the, the healthcare uh, field where we're partnering with uh, healthcare providers to answer some of these, uh, answer some of these questions. Um, enabling organizations to be interconnected, uh, interoperable. Uh, making the connections between uh, providers, uh, payers, patients. Information proficiency. Uh, innovative ways to capture, share, and analyze uh, data. Uh, and then talent creation and retention. Uh, how do we uh, make sure that we have the right people uh, working on the tasks uh, to take this data and provide it in the best way possible? Uh, so there are really four areas uh, where we want to uh, focus when we're talking about modernizing our IT infrastructure uh, in the healthcare field. Uh, the first one is uh, revitalization, uh, increasing uh, application uh, flexibility. Uh, and the key here is, is putting together a, a flexible application infrastructure. So we may have a lot of data sitting on the mainframe. We may have uh, data that sits in client server systems. We may have some data that sits out in the cloud. We have data coming in from uh, insurance providers. We have data coming in from doctors. We have data coming in from uh, specialists. Uh, and a lot of those uh, pieces of information are sitting on separate systems that don't talk to each other. So we have to start thinking about putting an infrastructure in place that's going to leverage all of those existing assets. Uh, maybe it's a service-oriented architecture. Uh, maybe we need to start thinking in terms of, uh, you know, rather than rigid point-to-point uh, -point integrations uh, between uh, different applications, maybe we need to start thinking in terms of an overall enterprise architecture, uh, an overall way to uh, capture that, that data uh, and provide it uh, as a service uh, to anybody who, uh, who needs access to it in a secure way. Uh, second one is around uh, maximizing your, your team productivity. <clears throat> and that's really all about um, making sure that your entire development and operations team are on the same page. It's all about um, collaborating across the entire life cycle, all the way from understanding the business requirements to designing your systems, to developing the code, to testing the systems, to deploying them into production, uh, and then feeding the, the, the uh, results from uh, application performance in production uh, back into your set of requirements. So it's this entire life cycle. And your team may be, <coughs> you, know, you may have uh, developers in Ireland, you may have testers in India, you may have you know, software architects here in Boston, uh, all doing work for stakeholders who may be uh, around the country uh, in, these, uh, in these large health uh, organizations. So collaborative lifecycle management across the entire enterprise is, is going to be really key. Uh, third is boost individual productivity. Uh, how many uh, folks in your software development team still have Kix programmers or uh, IMS programmers? Anybody? Not, not very many. Yeah, a couple people over there, they do. Uh, so we have to motivate. Uh, there's not a lot of Kix programmers coming out of college, uh, it turns out. Uh, so we have to uh, find ways to motivate the, our development workforce, have to find ways to make them more productive, have to find ways to uh, make sure that they <coughs> have the skills moving forward that they need to integrate all these systems together. Uh, so boosting individual productivity is one of the, the key areas. Uh, and then optimizing system utilization. Uh, make sure we're leveraging the assets that we have where it makes sense. Uh, make sure that we're consolidating applications that perform duplicate capabilities. Uh, <clears throat> make sure that we are migrating applications that make sense onto new technologies. Uh, so we're not going to move everything onto new technologies all at once. In some cases, we may never uh, move everything onto new technologies. In fact, the Florida hospital I talked about, with their system, the five million transactions a day, the multi-billion lines of code. They haven't had an unplanned outage on System Z for nine and a half years. Okay. 
That's a significant uh, amount of reliability, significant amount of security built into those systems. So you don't want to move your critical systems off uh, your existing systems if you don't have to. But we have to uh, understand uh, how we can combine some systems uh, as mergers happen. One of the cases I'll talk about in a minute with, uh, uh, with Highmark in Pennsylvania, uh, they go through multiple acquisitions or gone through multiple acquisitions. They need to find a way to consolidate uh, systems that do duplicate things. In a lot of cases, uh, providers uh, are not consolidating those systems because it's hard. So five, ten years after acquisitions, you're still running multiple systems for claims processing, for example. And it doesn't make sense. Okay, uh, so this is what I've kind of been talking about uh, in, in System Z. Uh, you want to preserve your core investments. You want to leverage the strengths of System Z in terms of security and reliability and so on. But you need to address the skills challenges. Uh, you know, programmers aren't getting any younger who programmed these things uh, 30 years ago. So we need to use modern tooling. We need to consider modern development environments, uh, modern uh, capabilities that enable them to leverage the skills they have, but also transition to new programming languages, new environments as we move forward. Uh, and you also need to be able to uh, understand your existing application portfolio. You have to understand what's out there before you can build a roadmap moving forward uh, to what's the, 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 the next step. Okay. Understand your enterprise architecture. So the, the key is deciding where your modernization activities are going to bring the most value. What, is the, what are the key things uh, that we need to, uh, need to do first? What are the high value pieces of the puzzle that we can modernize first? and get some benefit from. Uh, as we were talking about earlier, pick three projects, identify the high value projects, uh, make them successful, uh, and then move to uh, some, of the other, uh, some of the other aspects. So here's a, a typical moderni modernization strategy. Uh, we're going to use kind of ICD-10 as an example. Um, but the first step is to, to plan, uh, understand what your IT infrastructure looks like. Uh, a lot of organizations have no idea what their IT architecture looks like. Uh, it's the sprawl uh, that, that Gary showed earlier, right? Uh, multiple applications doing the same thing. Uh, multiple connections between applications that are not always uh, secure, that are not always reliable. So you need to have a, a view of your enterprise architecture. Uh, then you need to in implement uh, the solution for those chosen projects uh, and then validate that they're working. So that makes three, uh, three straightforward steps. Uh, here's an example of uh, the uh, uh, Health Plan Integration Hub, uh, which is a solution for uh, managing the transition to ICD-10, which is coming up in, in 2013. Uh, so the key here is uh, re really uh, take what you already have in terms of uh, you know, your system Z, enhance it uh, to take advantage of ICD-10. Uh, the, the key here uh, really is all about uh, the opportunity that you have. You can uh, look at ICD-10 as uh, an opportunity simply to uh, okay, introduce these, these, new uh, these new requirements, build it on top, or you can use it as an opportunity to innovate your entire business processes, your entire business uh, infrastructure, and re build really something that's going to uh, be positive for the, for the next 10, uh, 10, 15 years. So ICD-10 is uh, opportunities. So I want to close uh, with a couple of, couple of case studies. And I start with a hospital in uh, Taiwan. So this is a hospital that's been around now for uh, about 20, 20 years. Uh, and at the time, it was uh, a technologically advanced uh, hospital. Uh, unfortunately, what that meant 20 years ago was uh, green screens at nurses stations, for example, with access to uh, a mainframe, and largely paper-based transactions. They did have, uh, across the network, uh, a number of disconnected systems, uh, systems for things like uh, hospital information, picture archiving, that kind of stuff. But they weren't integrated together. So uh, when Taiwan transitioned to a new uh, single-payer system a few years back, they took it as an opportunity to really reinvent, uh, reinvent their systems, uh, identify uh, how they could satisfy the regulators while streamlining the system uh, and uh, putting in place be best practices and ultimately increasing revenue. So what they ended up doing was uh, understanding 
their entire <laughs> IT architecture. Uh, and then putting in place uh, new resource utilization tools, uh, electronic health record tools, drug prescribing tools, uh, built on top of a, what they called an executive information system. Okay. And what this enabled them to do was integrate a lot of the systems that already existed in kind of a service-oriented architecture uh, and enable them to provide access uh, to more, or more, uh, more correct access to their providers, to their doctors. Uh, while at the same time reducing the, uh, the reliance on, uh, on paper records uh, and increasing their regulatory compliance. So uh, after developing these, uh, these new systems, the executive information system, uh, tied back into uh, databases like DB2, uh, tied into the mainframe systems, modernizing their green screen systems while maintaining the back end on System Z. They were able to, able to increase revenue 5% uh, a month uh, for, the, for the first year. Uh, reduced incidence of erroneous medication prescribing, which is one of the, the, the key issues that they found. Uh, and eliminated the need for duplicate examinations uh, in the hospital. So they really, uh, by modernizing their IT systems, were able to really increase their revenues uh, and reduce their errors, which is uh, obviously in healthcare is, is really key. A uh, second example is uh, Highmark, uh, and at the back there there's a, a case study paper that talks more directly about this. Uh, but Highmark is one of the largest insurance plans in uh, Pennsylvania. Uh, and over the years they've acquired uh, smaller uh, plans, uh, and they are now a large, uh, a large insurance plan. But uh, for a while they still had uh, multiple claims reimbursement systems, um, multiple duplicate systems across their entire entire business processes. So they started to put in place uh, a service-oriented architecture system uh, to kind of pull the data, uh, provide data as services uh, for their applications and start to integrate uh, their claims processing and other, other pieces of the process uh, using something like WebSphere Application Server and WebSphere Process Server to map out their business processes uh, and tie all the uh, back-end systems together. So they ended up lowering their IT costs reducing their application integration complexity. They cut the number of applications that they were, uh, that, that they used uh, very significantly. Uh, and in, increase the flexibility, the ability uh, for them to take on new projects to transform their IT uh, environment very quickly. If you need more information on high markers, I mentioned there's a, a white paper at the back. Uh, there's also a paper there uh, on uh, the Florida Hospital too where we talked about their uh, DB2 system on System Z. Uh, so, uh, to wrap up, uh, and I think we're a few minutes early, uh, to wrap up, I just wanted to uh, kind of reiterate the, the key points uh, around modernization of your uh, healthcare IT architecture. Uh, it's really going to be imperative over the next few years as all these changes come about with health exchanges, more personalization of healthcare, uh, uh, more ability to uh, move to new technologies like cloud, uh, more regulatory compliance uh, mandates from, from government. We need to be able to take very siloed systems that are on multiple platforms across, uh, across the industry uh, and really start to uh, integrate these together. Uh, and we can do that in, in a number of ways. We can do that by leveraging our existing assets where it makes sense, uh, keep the existing systems there, just providing access uh, via service-oriented architecture for example, uh, to that data. By analytics, uh, to make sure we understand uh, all of the data, where it's coming from, how we can trust it. Uh, and then by uh, personalization, leveraging new technologies like the cloud to provide updates uh, across all of our stakeholders. Uh, so with that, uh, ask for any questions about modernization. How many people here are in the process of modernizing some aspects of their, uh, their application infrastructure? A couple of people. Is this, uh, these, these kind of things make sense that we're talking about here? Leveraging existing assets, uh, providing service-oriented architectures, moving to cloud? Okay. Yes, question at the back. Yeah, and I think that that's a, an absolutely valid approach, right? And we talked about, you know, that's potentially one aspect of, of the modernization effort is migrating uh, your systems. Right? Um, I'm not sure that's going to be the case 
for everybody here. Uh, so I, I think we have to be flexible in the, the approaches in the approaches we take. But that's certainly a valid uh, valid way to do things. I think the key there is uh, maintaining the integrity of the data, maintaining the security of the data, maintaining the reliability of the systems, uh, and making sure that those are, are in place before you you cut over to the new system. Obviously. Any other questions? Okay. If not, thanks very much for uh, for listening. Thank you.